It's Dr. John Bennett broadcasting from Miami Beach in Florida. Uh, we have the pleasure of, for neuroanatomy, Dr. Uh, we, have, we have the pleasure of having Ipe Cherry in, uh, uh, going to be, uh, give a lecture on uh, cranial bases, anterior, middle, posterior, and approaches. Okay, Ipe, welcome. It's all yours. It was okay. all right. Okay. It's frozen. Yeah. Yeah. Frozen. yeah. Just be patient. Be patient. Uh, I think he's at a new place. Uh, and uh, Krishna, because his other Wi-Fi looked worked pretty good at uh, Baratnagar. So how you been? I well, how you been, Vlad? What have you been doing? You, a lot, a lot of conferences. Uh, we've got lots of virus, but uh, we are running still a normal service. But uh, there are less patients since uh, people are afraid to go to, to, to the hospitals, you know, so still, they don't get diagnosed. Still, is it getting worse in Czechoslovakia? Uh, it's getting better now. It's getting oh. better, but it was uh, really, really bad for a while, for some three, four weeks. Now it's, the numbers are decreasing. Oh, okay. Good. Good. Yeah, Warlocks was just saying the vaccine is available. Is, yeah, it, avail not, is it available in Thailand now? Or no, is no, I think that it's uh, just announced. They just oh. make an announcement, but I don't know that uh, they are distributed to the normal people yet. But uh, I heard from some uh, people who work there, they say that for the, they're going to distribute the first lot to the, like maybe doctor or the nurse who like have to face those case first. Oh, okay. You know, when I introduced Sipe, I forgot all about your warlocks. <laughs> let, let, let me, let, we'll, we'll do it again. We'll do it again. Okay. Cause we'll get, we'll have take two. It, it's fine. I can't, I still stuck with you. You still have to do a lot of webinars. <laughs> hey, I was thinking you, you should have a signature little gesture that you give like, like wriggle your nose or something like that. Can you do that? Can you wiggle your nose? No, it tries to, be more like you can't uh, wiggle your nose, like 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 a signature that you'll be known for, like wiggling your nose or something. No, no. Now I try to uh, have less smile because uh, some people don't notice that I'm Nilo so yeah, try. Oh, okay. okay, yeah. I'm working on the internet, so be patient. He's doing something. He just noticed. You know what he, I mean, right? You remember remember the uh, bewitched. The TV show Bewitched. It's she, old. she was a. That's all. Did you ever see it? Yeah, I see that, but it's okay. old. Well, I know, but do you remember that she used to wiggle her nose? I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> try it. Can you try it? Just try it. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Or say something else. I don't know. That's something that you'll be known for. That people, well, people see you on the street, they'll wiggle their nose or do something. You know, it's really difficult to be an Asian woman and work as a surgeon because most of the patients don't think that you are surgeons. Yeah, I know. You say in the in the hospital or everywhere. Uh, everywhere actually. Uh, really. Then normally they will walk walk past me in the ER, so I just have to call them back. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Talk to me. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. You were saying they think you're in the maid and stuff, and and in the hospital they think you're cleaning up. That's I, true, right? They 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 think you came to clean the room. <laughs> I think I'm the externship or something. Okay, I I'm here. Okay, uh, we'll start again. Okay, let me. Let me IP there. Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm there, John. Okay, I'm we'll start there. again. Okay, anytime, Warlocks. Go ahead. Go ahead, Warlocks. Introduce uh, me. Okay, so hi. 
It's an illustrious TV. So today we have uh, the neuroanatomy TV. Neuroanatomy TV. Sorry. That's, that's better. <laughs> okay, so today it will be about neural uh, cranial base, anterior, middles, and posterior approach by Dr. I. Hiran. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. You can see. Yes, we see that. Okay. So before we talk, uh, I'm going to minimize this. You know, cranial base is a wrong term. You can hear me? Yes. What I'm saying is cranial, I mean, skull base is a wrong term. It should be brain base. The whole objective of getting into the base of the brain, where all the vessels, the nerves, and all other important structures are, is the objective of skull base surgery. Now, how you do that is by certain maneuvers. And these certain maneuvers, they depend on adequate removal of bone. They depend on unfurling the brain. You know, it is like a flag which is which is all, uh, let's say you have folded a flag. Now you want to unfurl a flag. You need to have some maneuvers depending on how the flag is folded. So removing enough bone and unfurling the brain, or in other words, unlocking the brain, is how you will get into the skull base. Now, if your objective is to get into the anterior skull base, which means optic nerves, carotid, third nerve, anterior suprasilla system, then a simple sphenoid ridge removal would suffice. But supposing you say you want to get lateral to the third nerve and go posterior into the interpetentricular system, you will need to do a pericavernous dissection because you need to get the temporal lobe out of your way. That way, if the temporal lobe is slowly shifted out or unlocked, that is called axial unlocking. You can unlock the temporal lobe away from the cavernous sinus. This is not actually giving you an access to cavernous sinus, but it is also widening your corridor lateral to the third nerve all the way up to the interpetentular system. Now let's say you want to go to the lateral aspect of pons then you have to come under the temporal lobe, remove the anterior petrous portion, the bone which is, can be safely removed from carotid to all the petrous ridge, from V3 to cochlea, all this bone can be removed. And then you are on, on the lateral aspect of the pons. So you, I'm telling you how to get into the anterior aspect, then the lateral aspect. And if you want to go posteriorly, you can do a posterior petrosectomy. That is nothing other than a mastoidectomy and also removing the semicircular canals and pulling the sigmoid sinus a bit back to get into a window that is very oblique, but posterior to the fifth nerve.
and then if you want to go lower further lower like yesterday the dissections what we did we excuse can go for a far excuse me i but please, the please slide, I, we don't we, we don't okay the slide is not excuse me no, no, the slide is not moving uh, i john the yeah. slides are not meant to be moving the slides i am just giving an overview oh okay i'm sorry i'm sorry oh ah, okay thank you okay don't worry the slides are not meant to be moving what i am saying please carefully listen to it what i am talking to to the other people is that what exactly is the meaning of skull base i mean without knowing the meaning of skull base then you know there is absolutely no point of anybody to uh, see all these procedures that's what i am saying so i am telling you how to access the anterior skull base how to access the middle skull base how to go behind the pons and how to come far lateral or extreme lateral or enough lateral as blad and you have said now having said that our objective today as many many times we have done is antro lateral skull base so here we have started this dissection you can see the frontal lobe here can you see everybody see this everybody see this yes 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 that's the frontal lobe that's the orbit that is the bone which is over the superior anybody about what is what bone what is the lateral what i mean what is this bone from the lateral limit of anybody please keep yourself unmuted when i ask you questions and keep on answering this where what is this what is this temporal lobe that i am going to strip it from and when i strip it from the cranial nerves will start to be seen here and what is that structure what fissure anybody okay neuro let's go superior orbital fissure oh, fissure yes wall of sinus yes yes and what is this structure which is on the junction of frontal lobe temporal lobe and superior orbital fissure what is that orbital band orbital yes the meningo orbital meningo orbital band right so you see you have to expose the frontal lobe the frontal lobe temporal lobe meningo orbital band and you are now dissecting this can be done in the cadaver and it can be done in life surgery also so right now what we are doing is we are gently dissecting can you see that is the lateral limit of the superior orbital fissure and if i remove this bone i can get into the orbit along the superior orbital fissure are you understanding me everybody yes yes i we do yes we can yes right thank you so that is the orbit and this bone is guarding the superior orbital fissure so if i remove this bone i can get from the cavernous sinus to the orbit you see so that is how tumors also get in from the cavernous sinus to the orbit so that that part we have to remove sometimes now i am what is what is this part that i am removing from the cavernous sinus i mean that is a cavernous sinus anything be, behind the superior orbital fissure is a cavernous sinus so what am i holding i am holding the temporal and dissecting it away from the cavernous sinus are you understanding me is it very clear yes 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 right so once you know that then you can also start doing it now superior orbital fissure will be seen along this line and if you follow along this line you will see the v2 also now the cranial nerves are not so clear and this is how you want to keep it in a live dissection or 
or in a in a surgery this is how you want to keep it because this membrane has to be kept if you don't keep this membrane and if your cranial nerves are seen that means if it is live surgery you are going to be having a lot of bleeding so you don't want to do that so you are keeping this membrane and slowly dissecting this away from the temp the temporal lobe away from this membrane and now you are incising the orbito meningeal band which is at the junction of the frontal lobe frontal lobe temporal lobe and the superior orbital fissure you can dissect it all the way up to the superior orbital fissure okay those of you who watched the dissections that we did day before yesterday where we did the same thing it is the same uh, anatomy and it is the same anatomy that you will use for most of your anterolateral skull based cases your aneurysms your tumors and many more things okay so this is how we are going to dissect it now Hello. Yes, we are hearing you. Yeah, I'll call you later. You see that? Hello. Yes. Everybody, can you see that? Yes, we are following you. and now now you see when i am cutting off that orbito meningeal band you see what i am exposing there what am i exposing there what is that anterior cleinoid cleinoid process yes. cleinoid don't tell yes the anterior cleinoid process see how this junction which one second right so you see how this junction of the temporal lobe frontal lobe and the orbito meningeal band once i cut this you see how this junction folds away this junction folds away from the it completely folds away from the clinoid process you see how easy that becomes you you see this entire junction falls back and the cavernous sinus is much easier to dissect and the anterior clinoid process or the clinoid triangle it starts getting exposed is this very clear everybody Yes, I thank you. Yes or no? Yes. Right. Yes. Once you understand that, once you understand this process, then I am going to further dissect the temporal lobe away from the cavernous sinus, and we will expose the entire cavernous sinus now. Okay. This is very easy. This is nothing very difficult. You see. so we are going to do that now this is a peri cavernous exposure you will be able to see the fourth nerve taking shape probably the v1 there through the membrane you can see because third nerve is always medial slightly medial underneath the cranial so third now you will not be straight away seeing it but you will see the fourth now and you will see the v1 so we are going to and you know uh, lateral to the third now there will be always the tentorial um, dura attachment or the clinoid process there is tentorial attachment so that dura has to be incised off you know otherwise when you take the clinoid process you will have to pull and push and everything so if you 
sharp dissect that dura off and the clinoid process is completely free okay we will see that was the attachment where that dura is getting attached to the tip of the clinoid process now you just displace the fourth and the third complex away from the clinoid process see that so the inferior part of the clinoid process is also free can you see that everybody yes, yes. or no are you understanding yes yes now i am going towards this side i'll be going towards the extra dural optic nerve i'll be going towards the extra dural optic nerve in this side okay if i dissect the dura on this side i'll be going towards extradural optic now i'll be able to see medial to the clinoid process i'll see the optic now inferior to the clinoid process i'll see the carotid you should know all these anatomy very very clearly if you don't know then dissection in this area it becomes a nightmare it becomes really difficult okay because it starts losing you get into the you get into a different plane and you panic and things go wrong okay so a lot of finesse a lot of knowledge of anatomy a lot of seeing these dissections and a lot of doing this dissection now you can see the fourth nerve clearly and the attachment of this dura to the clinoid now this is something i don't want you to do in a live surgery case okay but you see how easily this clinoid is exposed and you know it is detached off so i can take out this clinoid without any issues you see now that clinoid is coming out because i have detached the lateral margin of that clinoid away from the the ligaments the medial margin needs to be detached so i am detaching that also i have to be very careful because the carotico oculomotor membrane which directly overlies the carotid is there so i have to be very careful now that clinoid process is out okay and my optic nerve will be there and my carotid is going to be extradural carotid is going to be there when i open the dura yesterday day before yesterday we opened the dura that is a fourth nerve that is a that is a fourth nerve that is v1 and you have optic nerve there that is a optic nerve that that is optic now you can see can you see the optic nerve extradural optic nerve there everybody yes right no, that is the carotid in the audio i believe yeah can you hear me now we can yeah yeah i was not talking that's why i was just watching and enjoying it uh, i was not talking okay so that is why you lost the audio don't worry okay john so i am drilling the optic strut now that is underneath my optic nerve see this is my optic nerve this is the optic strut which is anterior to the c3 turn of the carotid and underneath the optic nerve underneath you must remember extradural ha huh? oh you has here you has here i hey you ha it's a pleasure to have you and vlad vlad's here too wow so the two titans Hi, hi. Vlad and you. Hey, you, uh, Vlad. Good to yeah. see you. And you also. Great to have you here. I know Thank I. You. I must have done this talk in with. Uh, you must have seen this for the hundredth or the thousandth time, Vlad. But uh, I guess 
it's interesting each time even i see it you know because probably i have some amnesia that is why but i enjoy this each time uh, i see it i enjoy it i hope you do the same i'm not boring the hell out of you so you can see the optic nerve there you can see the carotid there that's a carotid there and that's a strut that bone that piece of bone between the optic nerve and the carotid that that's a carotid i'm displacing the carotid down and that piece of the bone is the strut so we remove the strut and we come back to the cavernous sinus and you see that the clinoid triangle is off that bone is off now okay so you can see the fourth nerve that is the superior orbital fissure where third nerve here fourth v1 is getting into the orbit that bone has been left now you can see the v2 and you can see the v3 and you can see that is the gasserian ganglia if you don't know about cystinostomy then you can open this gasserian ganglia and let out a piddly little amount of csf and try to lax your brain but if you know cystinostomy you can open your dura right above the optic nerve here in this region if you open the dura you are right into the largest cisterns and you can let out a lot of csf if you think retracting this is going to be tough you can let out a lot of csf there in this region and you will be quite okay so you can see the fourth now now you can see the fifth now we want there we two there we three there and that is a gasserian ganglia okay and the fourth nerve and the v1 you can develop a small window between the fourth and v1 can you see the fourth nerve and the v1 so i am developing a window between the fourth and the v1 and that is the vertical portion of the carotid when you develop a window in the parkinson triangle that is between the fourth nerve and v1 you will see the paraclival carotid that's a vertical part of the carotid this carotid is going to go like that then it is going to come like that that is the horizontal intracavernous portion then it is going to come up again that is a paracellar portion so what you are seeing right now is the paraclival portion of the carotid between the fourth and v1 and medial to v1 you can already see a peak of sixth nerve okay this sixth nerve will go into the dorolos canal okay that sixth nerve will go into the dorolos canal so that is what you are seeing a peak of that sixth nerve so between that sixth nerve once it goes into the dorolos canal then your anatomy of pterocnoid ligaments pterosphenoid ligaments will come into play okay uh, that is important for removing your pterocnoidal meningiomas these ligaments are very important to remove to get into this space but let us forget that let us now see the sixth nerve that i am hooking out from medial to v1 that is the sixth nerve that is the sixth nerve that is the abducens nerve so you have v1 you have vertical segment of the carotid you have fourth nerve there and you have the sixth nerve there Day before yesterday also i showed the same anatomy in the dissections okay so this is the vertical carotid and you have the sixth nerve there all right and then now we are going between the v1 and v2 where you will see the junction between the paraclival carotid and you can even see it disappearing into the foramen lacerum so the foramen lacerum will come here and your your pitro lingual ligament will come underneath this fifth v1 and then your then your carotid will turn here into the pitrospon 
horizontal carotid. That also I will show you. That also I will show you. So now I have optic nerve, the paracellar, vertical paracellar carotid, C3 carotid, C4 carotid is like that. That is a horizontal segment. C5 carotid is like that. That is a vertical segment. And that is where the junction of C5 and C4 carotid is from where the meningohypophyseal branch comes. Okay? In the Parkinson's window. Now you are seeing the V3. That is the V3. And behind V3, I am developing the space there. Okay? That space is the Kawase triangle. So when you develop the Kawase triangle, you have to further push this dura, further the temporal loop, you have to further dissect it back. So that is what we are doing right now. The temporal loop, the temporal loop dura is being further dissected. And now you have the V3 there. The Peters Ridge there along the Peters Ridge has the superior, the superior petrosal sinus. The superior petrosal sinus will run on top of the on top of the fifth nerve. So this is the this is the gazerian ganglion and the retrogazerian fifth nerve will go down and superior petrosal sinus will go above us. Okay, you should know how to arrest the bleeding in the superior petrosal sinus. So how you, how what you can do is there you can open the dura here once you take out this bone and this bone you must remember the lateral boundary of this bone is the carotid so we are going to show you the carotid very soon you have the cochlea here okay you should identify the meatal line that comes with experience but i'll tell you easy ways to identify this meatal line uh, and you see, that's the carotid. That soft tissue that you see there is the carotid canal. So you saw the vertical carotid here. And this vertical carotid is going to become the horizontal carotid. That is C6 carotid. Okay? Horizontal carotid. So that is paraclival carotid. And that is petrous carotid. Okay? So you are going to see the petrous carotid there. So I have identified the petrous carotid. Once I have identified, see that I am moving that carotid away. Once I've identified that carotid, all this area, even posterior to the IAM can be drilled away. Now I'm moving the carotid away so that it never gets caught into our drilling region. So I'm very, very sure about that carotid now. Okay. And you can move your V3 a little bit anteriorly. And you can see that is a vertical carotid. Is a para clival carotid, and you can see the six now also going there. So now you can see V1, V2, V1 going into the superior orbital fissure, okay. And then this is V3, and now that's a carotid there. And I am doing an L shaped drilling, I'm doing an L shaped drilling all the way back to the IAM. You will see the IAM also now. You will see the IAM, internal auditory meatus. So up to the internal auditory meatus, you can do this drilling. Okay? You can decorticate the cochlea. Here, you can see the decorticating the cochlea. You can see the carotid here. The whole fifth nerve is in your way there. And the petrous ridge is here. So I am going to take away this bone till I see the... Till I completely see the dura of the posterior fossa. So that is the Kava says drilling. Okay. It's very, very simple. There is nothing to it. All you young guys, okay, instead of uh, thinking about writing 100 papers, please do this dissection. Go to your uh, uh, places where you can do dissections and go do this dissection. Okay. WFNS, Neuroanatomy Committee, the Neurosurgery Coach, we all will be happy. We all, our objective is that all of you should learn this. Okay? It should not be to some select few. Now, you can see the IAM dura already exposed. Can you see that transparent thing? That's the IAM dura. Okay? Remember, that's the IAM dura. So, the IAM, once you get that, then you are safe to go 
posterior to it, anterior to it, except the cochlea in this region. You can decorticate the cochlea, but don't drill the cochlea um, unless you, you really want your patient to be dead. Okay? You, sometimes it's not indicated. You know, most of the time there's no need also. So um, no, no need to go into the cochlea. So you can, that's a carotid. That's the IAM, that's the Petrus apex. There, there will be the true apex. Okay. You can remove all this bone. This entire bone you can remove. And uh, instead of getting a small tunnel like Kawase, you can get a huge exposure there. People tell me, oh, it's Kawase is not good exposure. Not wrong because you make a tunnel like exposure and you try to remove tumor through that tunnel, it is not a good exposure. You have to expose the carotid. You have to expose the Peter's. You have to expose the IAM. Okay. All this if you expose and if you can also mobilize this V3 anteriorly, you can drill around the foramen ovale and completely into the infratemporal fossa and then completely re displace this, you know, this nerve complex anteriorly and you can even take off the uh, the bone underneath the trigeminal impression, okay? I mean, the trigeminal impression can also be drilled, but you have to be careful about the carotid because the carotid comes medially in this place, okay? The carotid comes medially in this place and becomes the vertical carotid, okay? The paraclival carotid. So you have to be careful about that. But otherwise, all this bone you can remove. Everything, everything you can remove and this is exactly where your petroclival meningiomas are attached. This is, if you remove them and if you go, I showed you the vertical carotid there, the meningohypophyseal trunk is there, out of which is the branch which goes to the Casanari and Bernasconi tentorial branch. That is what supplies these meningiomas. You take that artery, you take this dura, you would have, you know, paralyzed the petroclival meningioma. All right? And unless you do something very wrong, like pulling it out in one piece or something, then you can you have a very good window of getting into these tumors. Of course, you should learn how this area you should learn. This area is a little bit complex. So you have petroclinoidal ligaments, petrosphenoidal ligaments. Okay, you have the superior petrosal sinus. You should know how to open the dura here. Okay, that we will show you. All right. So now we are going to do the do this drilling completely. I am not rushing through because I want you to see. You know, I want you to see everything. So can you tell me what is that structure? Anybody? What is that structure? Who's going to tell me what is that structure? That's a carotid. Go on, okay. the roof. That's a carotid. So we drilled out all that up to the posterior fossa. Lot of patient drilling required. And all that. Now you're going to open the dura. What you're going to do is from the posterior fossa, you come above the fifth nerve and then actually the fifth nerve dura can be opened like that. You know, you can be opened like that and then it can be retracted forward. Okay. This dura can be retracted backwards. So you will see the fifth nerve, retrogazerian fifth nerve is going there and you can see in front of the fifth nerve is there. So this will be the superior petrosal sinus. You need to, earlier we need to put clips. There is no need to put clips. You can use good bipolar. Bipolar, the superior petrosal sinus is possible most of the time. Sometimes it's not possible. That time you may use, you may, you may need clips. Actually. So you are releasing the fifth nerve there. That is the first thing you have to do. Okay, release the fifth. So this dura, you have to take it forward, okay? And you can see the lateral margin of your pons, posterior to the fifth nerve. And you can see this thick arachnoid where your fourth nerve 
Once you cut your tent all the way down, you will see your fourth nerve, you will see your PCA, you will see your superior cerebellar artery. Okay, you can see in front of the pons, you can see that that is a vertical paraclival carotid. Okay, vertical paraclival carotid. Remember that the artery Bernasconi Casinari will go back like that on the tent, on the tent. So you cut that tent, you take that artery off, then medial to the V1, you can see the sixth now going medially and you can also uh, see the Gruber's ligament and the pituitary ligament, you can you'll be able to see that, okay, that you need to release this part. So there will be tumors sometimes there. Okay, that is the that is the vertical carotid. And now you make a temporal lobe cut and then cut the dura. You will have a panoramic view, really panoramic view. Okay, all the way from second nerve. That's the second nerve. That's the clinoid. That is a paracellar vertical carotid. Then you have the third nerve coming here from the dura. I mean, third nerve can be released all the way. And then you have the vertical carotid, paraclival carotid, okay? And the paraclival carotid will go all the way underneath the trigeminal nerve. And now, what are you seeing? Do you realize what are you seeing? That is the seventh nerve. Okay, that's the seventh nerve because I have drilled the IAM and opened the IAM. That is, this is the lateral margin. That's the seventh nerve. Okay, that's the seventh. Sorry, this is the seventh nerve. Okay, and that is the fifth nerve. That is the fifth nerve. Posterior to the fifth nerve, that's the seventh nerve. IAM has been drilled. That's the IAM dura. And okay, that is the that is the seventh nerve complex. So you see, second nerve, carotid, third nerve, fifth nerve, seventh nerve, frontal lobe, temporal lobe orbit okay once the dura is opened you can see second now carotid third now going into the cavernous sinus you will see fourth now coming here and going in fifth now there the pons there lateral margin of pons there anterior margin of pons there. everything is seen on this exposure okay now i'm going to stop sharing How do I? Is that clear? Whatever we showed you, is that clear? Everybody? Yes, sir. Is there any questions? I thought, I mean, see, we did a very, very small, very, very, very slow dissection so that you could see everything. You know, you do, we did the same thing day before yesterday in Krishna Institute. And, uh, you know, I wanted you to understand. Everybody should understand this. You know, there are no secrets here. You know, I should learn from you all. You should learn from us. Whatever our work is, you should learn from us. That's the only way we go forward. You know, we keep our secrets to ourselves. Then we never go anywhere. You know, that is the beauty of this uh, group, the WFNS Neuroanatomy Group, which... I really enjoy being part of this neuroanatomy group because everybody there, you know, you, we do our work and we share it. So when we share it, we all learn. Everybody learns. And imagine now we have 61 participants. All of them will have something to share. Or at least you should do something that you can share some. Okay. And when you share, what happens is the collective knowledge is much, much more powerful. The whole idea of democracy is that, you see. So... You should be able to do that. Now, now, any questions or anything, any comments or anything that you have to say? Anybody? Yuha is here. Vlad is here. Uh, they have a questions from the panelists on the chat. Uh, yes. By the way, Shiva, she asks like, yes. when is the greater predosal nerve in relationships to Kawase triangle? Or, or maybe... Lateral most, lateral most part of it. See, you remember that I exposed the, I exposed the carotid. 
Yeah. In the Kawase Triangle, I expose the Peter Sclerotic just above that. Sometimes you have to section the GSPN to get into that area. So above the carotid, parallel to the carotid is the GSP, the greater superficial petrosis. And lateral to that is the LSP, the lateral, the lesser superficial petrosis. Okay. I hope that answers okay. the question. Yeah. Okay, thanks for the question from Dr. Shiva. So is there any other question you can ask of the eye? Okay. It's an open floor. So any questions, can... comments? Come on, guys, wake up. Vlad? No, no. Everything's clear. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Vlad. Welcome. Is Yuha around still? No, I think he stepped away. I... Okay, okay. Right. So anybody but, else? Any I, you probably any... should go to some specific diseases to show some tumors if you have uh, your material or aneurysms just to get the connection between the anatomy of the approach, which is excellent and perfectly shown. Yes. But to yes. show some uh, clinical ap applicants. Can you yes, do that? Yes, yes, yes. I will show you right away. I will show you. So we are, we will see... Um, let us see a live dissection, I mean, live surgery. Now, uh, one second, let me just share this. Okay. This will be, this will not take much time. And, uh, let me show you. Can you see now? Yes. Yes, okay. So again, like I showed you in the cadaver, so you have orbit there, you have the frontal and temporal lobes there, and you have the you have the orbitomeningeal band. You see that? Yes. Exactly like you. And that you are going to cut the orbitomeningeal band now, and you will see. Once you cut, the clinoid process will be becoming clearer and clearer. That is, you can see the clinoid process there. Already seeing the clinoid process. So I am going to slowly take stitches and do the same thing, exactly the same thing. Okay. Now, temporal lobe and frontal lobe stitches. And then, clinoid process exposure. That's, that's a clinoid process exposure. That's a cavernous sinus. That is a cavernous sinus that I'm going to expose, okay? That's a clinoid process. This side will be optic. So if there is no paraclinoid aneurysm, you can bite off this uh, clinoid process. Uh, I wouldn't say with impunity, but with a lot of care. Okay? With a lot of care, you can bite off the lateral, bo lateral borders of this clinoid, you can bite off. Now I have designed a new instrument, which I call it the tumor or the bone scoop. It is uh, like a mechanical cusa. Which, which you can, yesterday, day before yesterday, we were demonstrating it. It is uh, very easy to scoop off the bone. And if you touch the dura or the vessels, it's not going to do any, dam any damage, like the bone cusa, but much more cutting power. So you can literally scoop away the, the tumor or the, uh, the bone easily. You can scoop away. And each one of those scoops, uh, the detachable, the disposable part of the scoop is going to cost you less than $10. So after each case, you can uh, change it. Okay. So now I am drilling off the medial part of that clinoid so that I can see the optic nerve. Okay. I will see the optic nerve, extradural optic nerve. You will see it very soon. 
making it paper thin that is a extrudural optic now okay that is a extrudural just like what you saw in the cadaver and then this part will be the optic strut we will remove we will show that also and then i am if i go medially i am i am unroofing the optic roof i'm i'm unroofing the optic canal so this is the lateral part of the optic canal and this is superior part of the optic canal where i can unroof and when, once i unroof it this is uh, cutting the proximal and distal dural ring becomes easy because i can make a cut from there and come laterally and this is where the carotid is so you can see the optic there now we are going to peel off the peel off the cavernous sinus peel off the temporal lobe away from the cavernous sinus see that's a cavernous sinus the membrane is there so this is frontal temporal cavernous sinus clinoid triangle there slowly peeling off the temporal lobe away from the cavernous sinus see now the cavernous sinus is beautifully exposed beautifully exposed enter up to v1 in this case i don't need more than that so up to v1 in fact the v2 beginning will be there so all the way posteriorly i have taken the temporal lobe away temporal lobe is being peeled away so that will be v2 this is this is a superior orbital fissures lateral boundary and that's a cavernous sinus that's a clinoid triangle can you see everybody can you see somebody answer me can you see this yes 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 you see what we did the, in the cadaver is exactly what we are doing here nothing different we are peeling the temporal lobe away from the cavernous sinus so that's the cavernous that is a cavernous sinus entire cavernous sinus is getting exposed frontal lobe will be going away there and then you will see the optic and the carotid in this side once i clear that and if you go more posterior you will be into cavasse there is no need for that here okay here i need only a pre temporal root i have already achieved that and that is a optic nerve and that is a strut again i don't need to remove the strut in this case okay again although you know everything and you know what to remove and what not to remove you should tailor your approaches you should not take out every single thing when it is not required okay uh, exposure should always be tailored so that the that kind of stops the uh, case i can show you many paraclinoid aneurysms also on this or some transcavernous exposures but we've already crossing one hour limit so and uh, uh, you know i want you guys to go back and uh, read the rotens and then maybe next time you should come back and all the guys who've been here you should share, share something okay all of you guys should share something i'm sure professor kohli is here i mean vlad is here um, a lot of uh you know very senior neurosurgeons are here and uh, i'm sure they will also have a lot to share and talk so i mean we would be learning from them also so i would want them to also well, come now, and uh, i beg your pardon there's an uh, one hour limit i suppose so it's no time to share something no, that's okay. That's okay. We have time. If I pass time, time, we have time. time. Find that's time. okay. One hour, limit is, one hour limit is for me. After oh, okay. that, discussion can go on the entire night. Oh, it is okay. learning, so no problem at all. If you 
if you want to share something anybody wants to share something uh, we will be more than happy to listen and learn okay dr jayant gaud ask is it necessary to open the lamina terminalis during cisternostomy uh, not always jayant i mean i earlier we used to do that but uh, now we do it only when there is ventricular blood if there is no ventricular blood to open the lamina terminalis means exposing the ventricular system into the subarach to the subarachnoid blood and is a we think it is unnecessary because if you open the systems properly the brain is going to get really lax and uh, if you open the membrane of reliquest also the brain is going to be really lax no need to open the lamina terminalis but if there is ventricular blood yes maybe it's a good idea to go and open the lamina terminalis okay thank you sir okay uh, let's see any other comments questions um shiva says can you quickly review the course of the ica in this region please it was slightly unclear about the vertical and horizontal ica did you get that idea? right so um, yeah so i will um, you know what i can do is i will if he sends a whatsapp in whatsapp message to me i mean many of you have my whatsapp number i will send you an article by us and then that explains i see a course in a very very simple way our classification so um vlad must have heard it a thousand times so vlad uh, uh, i mean many of you would have heard it so many times i don't know whether shiva would have heard it but i can first send it's a schematic diagram also um you know it also explains in detail about the ica course and the relationship of all these things to the ica so if you can send me a whatsapp message i'll be able to john you can share my whatsapp number okay and if you do that then i'll be able to share this article with uh, all of you nilesh you also have that article right so nilesh is here in the participant list you can message him also nilesh can give you that article straight away from the whatsapp is is that neurosurgery coach type or your personal uh you mean the the classification Yeah, no, no. For Gian, he should contact you through neurosurgery coach. Oh well, the thing is, right now I am without. I just got this office, you know. I just got this office, and uh, I don't have a secretary or a computer or anything. So it's impossible for me to run the neurosurgical coach for at least uh, uh, a couple of weeks more. So once I get people to help me, because right now I'm uh, running. everything out of a phone and an ipad so it's a bit oh, okay. difficult so i'm just setting it so once i get my secretaries everybody in place then i can go ahead and uh, uh, you know start the activities for the university coach now i see a few more questions somebody was asking me could you show once again the dura cut after penetrating the cava se trine okay um so the dural cut uh is first the dura is cut along the base of the temporal temporal lobe and then you take it to the posterior fossa and the junction of these two cuts is the superior petrosal sinus and you clip the superior petrosal sinus or bipolar the superior petrosal sinus and cut medially to the dent and these are the three cuts uh along the temporal dura base along the posterior fossa and then along the dent posterior to the fourth lung okay these are the cuts okay okay I think that answers a lot of questions I guess. Okay, Warlock, are you there? Somebody Somebody is answer, somebody is asked why do people have made cavernous sinus so difficult for younger surgeons to access? That's because this is neurosurgery Deepak and 
it needs a lot of blood and sweat to go into the cadaver labs after your regular work and learn and then fail in a clinical case, then learn again, then fail, then learn again and fail for many years till you understand something. And when you do that, when you, when you do finally understand, it is mandatory for you to share it. And if you don't share it, that understanding will remain with you and the other young neurosurgeons will have some other, another understanding. Everybody will have their own understanding, but we will not progress. So I hope that answers your question. Okay. So we, for me personally, I have uh, put in a lot of hard work to learn about this region after my regular work. Of course, they're all neurosurgeons and uh, we all are busy. But after that, you go to the cadaver lab and learn and read and then do, then fail, then again learn, then do cadavers, then fail again and then learn. And after that, what the concept, that concept that you get, you share. Then once everybody understand, understood those concepts, you go again the next step, more attention to detail and you go again to the next step. That's how you... You progress, huh? <laughs> right. Okay, well, Alex, it's time to wrap up. Yes. Is Any Alex comments or anything? And we I are ready to wrap up. One question by Dr. Shida say, how, how can we avoid the stripping of the pericarbonus? with membranes as we mentioned during the dissections video yeah so uh, for this you have to do sharp dissection of the orbitomeningeal band if you don't do then you have every chance of stripping that membrane and getting into the wrong plane so you have to do sharp dissection of the orbitomeningeal band and get into the plane above the pericavernous so that is how you do it. This is our technique. There is a paper in Asian, Asian Journal of uh, Neurological Surgeons, our paper on a, a bloodless way of transcavernous dissection. There's a paper. I think it's 2018 or something. So you can look at it and then you can look at our YouTube videos. The whole secret of it is to do a sharp dissection of the optimum children. Mm. Okay, is there any other questions from the floor? Can um, I can show a glinoid meningioma, which is uh, actually what I've has shown us from the beginning, cutting the meningeal orbital band and uh, anterior glinoid resection. You want to see that? Do we have time for that? Yeah, we have time. Vibe does. Mm. Yes, yes, Vlad, please. All right, so let me share. Please, please show that, please. This is a piece of a lecture from a sphenoid wing meningioma. You are certainly sharing, but I don't see it. John, I can see that you are sharing it. You're trying to screen share. I can see that you are sharing it. Yeah, go go to the PowerPoint directly to the PowerPoint. Don't go to Zoom. All right. Go directly to your. There you go. There you go. So we were sixty. Yeah, we can see. We can see. Female. She's got visual deficit on the left eye for five months developed, and uh, it's a usual the clinical symptoms of anterior clinoid. No remarkable history. This is the tumor. You see it. So it's obviously anterior clinoid tumor. And now let's see the video. This is the pterional craniotomy. And now this is the resection of the sphenoid wing, the outer part. And you come to the deeper, a little deeper to the orbitomeningeal band. And exactly as I have shown, you just cut it. You coagulate the orbitomeningeal artery, which is not a big deal. And then you develop the plane between the two layers of the 
cavernous sinus. You see, this is the orbital meningeal band over here. This is the orbital, the lateral orbital wall. This is frontal. And now you cut it. And here, to develop the plane between the two layers of dura, is the paramount movement. In all the textbooks, they do it from the orbital meningeal band. What I found, it's better found a little more temporal and then going backwards to the meningeal band. You see, now I'm developing the plane over here on the lateral wall of the orbit. This is already the cavernous sinus and then going back to the orbital meningeal band. Somehow I found it easier a little downwards, not directly on the wing. This is still the whole anterior clinoid there. And now it is the question whether to resect it in meningiomas, radically now or not. What I sometimes do, I just break it and keep the tip free since I'm a little afraid between the adhesions between the uh, uh, carotid and the tumor and uh, the dura over here. Uh, it's not uncommon since the carotid is not really covered by the arachnoid in the extra neural space. And then the tumor can grow into the wall and you may rupture it very easily. So this is the dura opening. In ophthalmic aneurysms, I always do it intradurally. It's just uh, a remark. This is frontal, this is temporal, and you just go ahead for the tumor to release the optic nerve. Let's see it in a little while. This is too high magnification, as you like to say. This is the beginning of the sylvian fissure, and you just strip the arachnoid from the tumor. You do not cut arachnoid unless necessary. This is the uncus. Here is the olfactory nerve, the tumor here. Now we will glimpse the middle cerebral artery over here. The lateral we shall go as far as the third nerve. Never cut dura on the lateral side of the uh, clinoid since there may be the third nerve. It's very close there and you may either heat him or even directly damage. So always the cutting the dura from the tip of the, uh, of the clinoid must be only on the frontal side to put it mildly. And here we are on dura. You see already the opening. This is the uh, rim between the frontal and temporal, and you cut the dura only here, just opening the uh, dural bands. Now we are already there, and then you unroof the optic nerve, which is running here. We are still lateral, here is still the tumor. Is it, is it uh, clear what I'm doing or not? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. It is. Uh, okay. So are... this is the surgical which was put to the place of the anterior clinoid, and you see it is the remnant of the clinoid, which is still there, left behind, and it's uh, I resect it now. You see, it's completely free, very small piece, but I just feel somewhat safer that I will not damage anything, and this is easy to resect at this point, not, not extra dural. Now we are already extra dural. You see the carotid. We are now this part is already anterior to the uh, ring. And now it's about time to resect the tumor from all these pieces. You see, this is already very clean. Here is the third nerve, here is the carotid. This is the relinquished membrane, which you do not need to open. It really serves as a barrier of your dissection. And now let's go to the optic nerve, which is uh, probably the important structure here, or the most important structure here, unless you damage anterior choroidal, you have nothing else to damage in this area. Carotid is a mighty structure, which is unlikely to be damaged intradural. Extradural, it's uh, quite easy. And now the dura will be cut along with the ring. We know where the carotid is. We know where the optic nerve is. So you may cut it free. Again, the sergicel from the approach is left here. And now it's 
rather something which may be surprising at the beginning that uh, uh, somehow the optic nerve doesn't run, run away from you here straight, but it's bent like it's nearly in a way horizontal uh, in a meaning. So you may be aware of that, that the optic nerve, if you see it intradurally somewhere over here, extra dural, it will be over here because it's pushed by the humor and here it goes into its normal and original uh, position. This may be a little confusing. You see that the nerve is running, uh, let's say, transversally to the surgical field. And now here is the optic nerve. Here is the rim, still the humor being pushed, the carotid. You see all the structures. Again, please note that the whole arachnoid is preserved. It's the best natural barrier. And as Professor Kanan says, it's arachnoid is your friend. And here's the tumor itself, which now is completely free from the skull base, completely bloodless. And you just may decrease it by CUSA, should you wish so, should you need so. And then take it out as it is. You see the tumor doesn't look that small as soon as you have your high magnification. Now it really is embedded only in the frontal and partly temporal, lobe, but mostly frontal. So there is again nothing to damage, but it should be completely extra arachnoid dissection. You do not want to damage it. That's it. And now you see the anterior cerebral, middle cerebral, carotid, optic nerve. Here is the olfactory nerve, optic nerve. This is the Hoibner's artery. You see all the structures you want to see here. And all this is because you did your extradural clinoidectomy. Then you have lots of space there for everything. You see, this is the whole approach. Now with a little plastics, you just cover the field. And this is after. All right. This vision improved. That's enough of, of a case. Ipe, did it fit to your? Yes, yes. Thank you, Vlad. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Vlad. That uh, makes okay. things much more clearer. Again, I, I suppose for the younger crowd. Um, is uh, Dr. Colley is here? Is Dr. Colley still here? Let's see. I haven't seen him. I, I, uh... No, he's here. I can see him. Okay. Uh, he may have stepped away. Uh, Dr. Coley is the name? Well, if there are no more uh, things to discuss, then I guess we can uh, uh, wind up. What I like can wind up. I hope this has been useful to everybody. And I think uh, Nilesh, my consultant, has shared the classification of the carotid on the chat. Uh, yeah, I think Nilesh has shared that. So the carotid classification, I think that will make things very clearer. So we have a textbook chapter also. I'll try and share that textbook chapter. That is a textbook chapter. Okay. So that textbook chapter is shared. So anybody who wants to have a look can have a look at that textbook chapter. Okay, thanks for uh, Dr. Ive and Dr. Benes for the very wonderful presentations and uh, very amazing case and dissections uh about the uh, anatomies of the cranial base and pyramidal at posterior so if there's uh no more questions so yeah so uh for the next week we also have the uh, wonderful presentations by dr victor about the orbit it will be coming for the next monday so thank you very much okay thank you everybody thank you Warlock. thanks thank you. thank you for coming vlad that was great Thanks, it was fun. I enjoyed that. It was fun. Yeah, me too. Thank you very much, Vlad. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. And uh, next, we see it, we see again next time. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.